Okay, so let's just, you know, look at eigen decomposition. And this is just a uh, reminder. So basically, uh, generally, when we have a matrix A, so we have a matrix A. The matrix uh, is, a, is an n by n matrix uh, describing, for example, a system that affects some linear geometric transformation of a vector. And what we have here, when we decompose it, we get the eigenvalue, which we also call the eigenmode of system A, or the magnitude. And for the eigenvector, it actually, it's the, um, it only changes in magnitude. So its direction is fixed. So when we uh, multiply it by lambda, uh, when we multiply it by A, we get it scaled up by a factor lambda. So here, eigenvalues are sometimes thought of as the natural modes of a system A, okay? Like a network or a graph that is encoded in a, in a matrix A. And the eigenvalues, uh, for example, here, so the eigenvalues of an oscillating system are its natural and resonant frequencies. Uh, and the eigenvectors correspond to their shapes. So uh, because you can actually display the shape of the signal, so you can see this is like a signal profiling, OK? So here, this is the first uh, general definition. Now. If you guys have taken uh, machine learning uh, before, you know that when we have a covariance matrix of um, a, a particular data set, okay, and we perform the eigen decomposition of the covariance matrix, so this is exactly uh, equivalent to uh, performing PCA, principal component analysis. And if you look at this uh, video uh, on Balsera Lab channel, Machine Learning Blink 11. So I explain why why the Eigen decomposition basically of uh, a data, a cloud of points, for example. So this is, uh, let's look at this here. So these are my data points. Each point can represent, um, like for example, uh, like any type of data, a video, a picture, etc. So PCA, what it's doing is trying to find the direction along which if you were to project all these points, you will maximize their variance. And this is based on, uh, uh, on an eigen decomposition of the covariance matrix of this data. And we have two uh, principal directions, the first eigenvector and the second. And these capture uh, the information and the variance of the data. So you can see that actually eigen decomposition is a very cool concept from, you know, general like signal processing to covariance matrices and data analysis to graphs, right? Where we're using here, uh, what we have is a, um, we have the adjacency matrix of a graph with positive values and we perform eigen decomposition and we're interested in the pr principal eigen vector with largest eigenvalue, and this actually gives us a topological measure of the centrality of each node, okay? So now I have a question, why actually it does that? This is an important question. Why the eigen decomposition of an adjacency matrix from an intuitive perspective, intuitively, why it is able to find, basically to satisfy these criteria? right here. So basically it is, it gives a value, this value here in the first eigenvector of an adjacency matrix of a graph is able to say uh, how many neighbors it has about this node. Also, uh, it also is able to measure uh, this, the connectedness, you know, of the neighboring nodes to that specific node, or, you know, like capture both aspects. From an intuitive perspective, why is that possible? I will not answer this, you guys, please look up. So I want you to Google this, try to find good resources that they explain intuitively why this actually, why this is the case, okay? What's the magic behind this? Feel free to post links below the video and explain why this is actually working, okay? So how the mass basically meets the intuition or the 
uh, the assumption we have. Now let's look at this example. For example, this is a connectivity matrix. This is a real uh, morphological brain network or brain graph. It uh, encodes the similarity between, uh, you know, the geometry of different parts of the brain, the co-similarity in um, morphology. And here we performed an Eigen uh, decomposition of this uh, adjacency matrix. So on the diagonal in this uh, in this matrix, we find this is actually the these are the Eigen uh, values. So we have n Eigen values, uh, but they're represented in a diagonal matrix. So these are two zeros, but you can represent them, of course, as, as a single vector, right? So we have, and yet we have n eigenvectors. So each, uh, like each of those basically represents an eigenvector. So it's an n by n uh, matrix, okay? So there is an interesting paper, if you guys want to, I'm, I'm going to put also the link to this paper below. So feel free to read this paper. It's really um, an interesting paper published in 2018, and you guys can see that this is still an ongoing area of research, right? So what does this nice graph or nice plot like represent? Let's look at this a little bit. So here basically what we have, this is a graph, this is the input graph, okay? This is the adjacency matrix of um, a graph and this is a, a very particular type of graph called um, Erdos Renyi graph. So this is a probabilistic, a random graph where you're generating uh, you know, for example, you're giving the number of nodes to your algorithm. We have 10 nodes and it's creating edges between it's connecting these nodes with a probability of 0 0.2. So this is a randomly generated graph. Okay. Now, if in this uh, plot, what we were going to focus on are these uh, values. So you can see these values right here, these, you know, lines, they actually, the represent the eigenvalues of the adjacency matrix of the graph. Okay, so you can plot them here. And then, interestingly, uh, what is being done in this, um, the analysis that's being, you know, like performed in this uh, paper is that, look, here, for the black, I'm just going to comment on the black, uh, on the black line, or let's look at the other one. So here, the characteristic polynomials, let me read this and explain. So the characteristic polynomials of graph A and this of the matrix A associated with our graph G, but we remove a node N. So this is basically when we remove a particular node. So all these red lines, they represent, uh, you know, like the characteristic polynomial associated with the graph, right? when we are removing particular node of the graph. So these are, this is why um, there is also another paper that I will include. It's called Hearing the Shape of a Graph. So from, you know, like decomposing, doing eigenvalue decomposition of your graph and, you know, finding the uh, characteristic polynomials associated with the graph, which is explained in the paper, but I will not go over this because it's too detailed uh, for, uh, you know, an introduction to Eigen decomposition, you can see the profiles of, uh, of the, the, the graph, okay, when you're removing different nodes, what is happening? So every time you're, you have a graph, right, and each time you're removing a node and seeing how the um, Eigen decomposition of that node changes, basically removing this one, for example, then in the next round, this one, and you're looking at how this is changing, and here what we have basically uh, for the red ones, so this is the red one, as for the black one, this is just the simple, it's like for the whole graph. It's the uh, characteristic polynomial of the whole graph at different lambdas or different eigenvalues, and what you can see that this characteristic pro polynomial, right, it kind of fits these modes. I will just draw it, let me just find a color. So you can see that here it's going up, and then it's going down, it's changing, right? So it's like, you know, it kind of is captured by these uh, splits or these jumps in like eigenvalues. And right here, it's like going down and then we see another going up. So this is why basically the eigen decomposition of an adjacency matrix of a graph, it gives us a lot of information. It creates this profile uh, of a graph that we are, we can, we can use to analyze different <coughs> kinds of graphs. So, Right, so this was just, you know, as a uh, frontier uh, 